What's up, people? I am back for another video. So before I start this video, I guess I'll give the schedule this week. Today, I'm going to review Rush Hour 2. Tomorrow, I might do the bands I love, and the bands I love this week will be on um, the band Evanescence. So that'll be maybe tomorrow or Wednesday, but the main video tomorrow will be Rush Hour 3. So we're going to kind of do the finale. Then Wednesday, I'll do the fixing on a what on a Freddy's Dead. And then Thursday, or this could swap. I'm probably, because I talked about it last week in a chat, so I'm going to watch, I haven't watched this movie in a few years. We're going to watch uh, the Jet Li classic, Romeo Must Die, probably the best Romeo and Juliet story. So I'm going to review that. And then I don't know what I'm doing Friday, but so that's so far. But today, I am reviewing Rush Hour 2. I watched it a bit earlier. I gotta say, I really like it. I think it's my, it's still not my favorite of the three, but I think it is a really fun film. The dynamic between Lee and Carter is fucking great. And I think they, I like the Jep, the China setting or Hong Kong, it was in Hong Kong. Ricky Tan was the only part I didn't like as a villain. He just didn't do it for me. Like, cause even the villain in the first one, yeah, they weren't, like... They're not, like, Hans Gruber or someone, but they're, like... They still stood out. I felt like in this one... Because they try to have him have that, like, tie to Lee because he killed Lee's father. But it's, like... It doesn't really work. Because he's not... I don't know. Maybe it's the actor himself. I don't know. It, it just... But I did really like, uh... Zhang, I cannot say her last name, but she's the woman you might recognize her from. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, which I rewatched a few weeks ago. She's fucking great in that. I think she's good in this. Um, as like the, the, the big, kind of like she's the big, in a way, the big heavy. Even though she's not heavy. She's like, because she knows how to fight and shit. The only thing, her and Jackie should have had a fight scene. Like, I still don't really get the decision not to do it. You have two real, and I get why they gave it to Carter, but it just, I don't know. But overall, I still really like this movie. I think it's a fun film. It's definitely one to watch when you're watching the trilogy. The, like, Lee and Carter are much funnier in this, and I like the little callbacks to the first one. Honestly, the fight choreography is fucking great. Like, especially the scene where Lee and um, Carter beat up the can's bodyguards at the massage parlor. I fucking, I'll admit that was actually really good. Probably the best choreography of the whole film. So, I'm gonna get started here. <coughs> so, so, the movie opens up. We see this woman, which is who Lee deliver a bomb to the U, I think it's the U.S. Embassy, U.S. Consulate, which ends up killing undercover U.S. agents. And then the film really opens with, we see Lee and Carter in Japan, not Japan, Hong Kong, singing in the Beach Boys, which I love that little continuity. I'll admit that this film definitely was a true sequel in the sense it continues the first one and builds on it. Like, in the first one, Carter hated the Beach Boys. Now, f fucking, they're both singing it. And um, it turns out, because Carter thinks this whole trip's like a vacation, but it turns out Lee's investigating Ricky Tan, but he's acting like it's a, a vacation. So Carter figures out, but they go to um, this, uh, I think, bar, karaoke bar. You get this kind of funny scene. Like, while Lee's investigating the bar, you get, there's this guy singing, um, I don't remember which Michael Jackson song it was. Um... I'm trying to look for it. Because I know it was like, I'm, I'm trying not to. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Yeah, this is really bad. I can't, I just, my mind, mind went blank. Oh, can't I cannot believe I forgot that. Can't stop till you get enough. So you get this guy, like guy who's singing it, who's really bad. So Carter goes up there and sings it. You get this funny scene. Then Z kind of runs in with a gang. Then Lee chases her. You get this really dope scene of Lee fighting on a bamboo 
which I'll admit is really dope. It's like, like, like I said, the choreography, Jackie Chan, he puts so much, even if it's like a comedic film, like even in like the Tuxedo, which is a movie he did with Jennifer Love Hewitt around about the same time as this, or no, I think about like a year after this movie came out. He put effort into any kind of movie he's doing, even if it's just some like fun comedy like these movies. He puts effort into the choreography, just the way he has to balance on the um, on the bamboo. And it's like the thing too with Jackie Chan films, he takes a beating at times. Like he's not just like besting these. Hold on, sorry about that. Um, he's not just besting these people in like two seconds. Like he gets, he takes a beating. And then while this is happening, Carter initially climbs and he's like, uh, uh no, no, because he sees a body fly down. So he runs up the stairs and you get this Asian lady calling him Kobe. <laughs> Pretty fucking... That's the thing about these movies. This was made when no one had a stick up their ass. You could just joke about everything. Like, they literally joke about, like, every race in this movie. Or at least, like, ma the, the main races. So Jackie reaches to the top, but Z takes him out with a bamboo stick. Then, so he's, Car Lee's left hanging. Carter makes it up, and then she hits Carter. Then they, they fall down onto the ground. Then the next day, this is where we get the really funny scene where they go to the, um, they go to the massage parlor. And I'll admit it's a pretty funny scene, like, of Carter trying to pick out the chick he, chicks he wants while they're ma massaging. It turns out Ricky Tan's there. Carter confronts Ricky Tan because he calls him a midget. <laughs> then destroys his uh, computer. Then they try to arrest him and then get this cool fight scene. Probably the best fight scene in the whole film, honestly. The choreography between the two, and you can just tell that actually Carter's not now knowing how to fight. The scene where he's used, fucking Lee is using his fucking, because he puts his feet into a fucking metal trash can and it starts just kicking people. It was really funny, but then they end up taking out most of the guys. But then his backup shows up. They don't, you would think they would kill him or something. Nope, they just duck and take all their clothes off and embarrass them. Carter and Lee get into an argument because Carter is obviously mad because he feels like this wasn't a, 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 a vacation. So Carter walks off after the argument. We are introduced to... Um, to, to Chief Sterling, who's um, Agent Sterling. He's um, the leader of uh, the CIA. And um, they pretty much told Lee, you gotta stay out of the way. When Lee goes, then we see that same woman <coughs> who Lee drop another bomb off, which ends up blowing up. Lee thinks Carter's dead, but what's actually happening is Carter is trying to get back to the, the massage parlor. You get this funny gag with him and the lady trying to kill a chicken. Then he ends up getting into a taxi. Then the taxi takes him to Ricky, to the boat that we see. And then he get, I kind of, this, the, the, the scene though where Lee is listening to um, I'll Be Missing You by uh, Puff Daddy was a funny fucking scene. Even though you know Carter's not dead. It's just, this film, I'll admit, is really funny. Um, even though, the like I said, the weak, Link is the villain, but at the end of the day, these movies I'm not really watching for a crazy villain at the end the end of the day, so they manage to get to the boat. This is where we meet Isabella, who's a secret agent. You know, obviously Carter tries to flirt with her. Then uh, Lee arrives on the boat, takes out one of the guys. Lee and Carter meet up, but they end up getting captured. Then Ricky Tan tells Lee that I didn't set up the bomb but some of his people did. Then, uh, Huli shoots him, seemingly killing him. That's, and I'll get more to this in the end. Then, um, we get this big fight in the end, obviously, a chase where Lee and Carter are trying to chase Huli, who manages to escape, and Huli just kind of punks out Carter, <laughs> which is, it's pretty funny. So I understand why they have him face her in the end, but, so... While this happens, the agent Sterling basically tells Carter, you gotta go back to LA and that this trip's over. And he tells Lee, you're out of the investigation. So Lee 
Carter is like in, pretty pissed at Lee, but then he, Lee tells him really what really happened that Ricky Tan killed his father. So I'll admit this scene was really good. So then they get back on the boat, and while on the boat, Carter mentions uh, Stephen Rain, who he saw earlier. You can get this funny scene, a gag about like the rich white man. See, that's the thing about these films. I'm gonna keep mentioning they. This was when you can just joke about anything, and it wasn't a problem. So they arrive back in LA. I wish it was in China longer. I think that was my other issue. I really liked the setting in Hong Kong because it was like a. It would have been a nice role reversal because you know Lee goes, went to, to Los Angeles in the first one for them. Now Carter to be in his. Um, now Carter's in Lee's area, and you get this funny guy. I should have mentioned this earlier, where fucking Lee's like, I'm Michael Jackson, you're Tito, you're Toto, he said. Like, like that's, I, I like the China setting, and I just, I think it was cut short a bit, but I get it. So we're back in L.A., they see Isabella changing, and you get this funny gag, obviously, of Lee kind of watching her change. But then they notice the woman, Lee, giving her, they think is a bomb, they go, and you get. They end up stopping. It turns out it's not a bomb, but uh, Isabella tells them about that they have a stash of fake money, and um, then they meet Carter's uh, informant, uh, Kenny, played by uh, Don Donna uh, Don Cheadle. Who he's not a terrible actor. I've always I don't obviously I don't like his politics. But I think Don Cheadle's okay. He's not a lead actor, though. But I think he was funny in this. You get this funny gag where him and Lee are actually fighting together. And throughout the film, Carter's speaking bad uh, Chinese. So the money that they gave to Kenny turns out is fake. So they visit Rain Towers. This is where it's seemingly they, they get double-crossed by Isabella, who, turns, who works for the bad guy. They load up Lee and Carter onto trucks. Now they're in uh, Las Vegas. They, Lee and Carter escape, take out some bad guys, then they have to walk through sewage to not die. Then they go to, um, like this, um, gay, like this Louis Vuitton type of shop, and you get this, like, obviously kind of gay character, which I thought was actually pretty funny, a little bit of, like, callback. You know, it, rem it reminded me of, like, Beverly Hills Cop 1, where you had that gay guy. So, you couldn't do that now, because now it'd be, low. it's homophobic. So it was pretty funny. So they get the change of clothes. They go to the event. Turn it's now Isabella saying that she's on doesn't work with Ricky Tan. She's playing both sides. So she asks Lee to get help her. Lee agrees while Carter causes a distraction. Lee ends up getting captured by who Lee and her people, and it's revealed that Ricky Tan isn't dead, that he faked his death. Then, yeah, Isabella tries to help Lee escape. We get this kind of quick fight scene between her and who Lee really quick while Lee and, because Lee has a bomb in his mouth taped, and you get this funny gag with um, Carter, like, not knowing what he's saying. They manage to get the bomb away. Who Lee shoots Isabella in the shoulder. Tries to escape because she tries to get the detonator. But Lee manages to get the bomb away while everyone escapes. Then this is where we get the fight scene between Carter stays back and tells Lee to go. So he decides to fight. It, for me, the fight wasn't bad, but it just, it would make more sense. You have, you have this woman who was awesome in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. You would think, yeah, let's have her and Jackie go at it. I get it. They were throughout the film building up. She's punking him, so he wants to stand up to her. So I get what they were going for. You could have even had them both go at her. I would have even been more open to that. But so he actually got some skills, manages to. Uh, she ends up seemingly stabbing him in the chest, but because of the money, the fake money in his show thing, and manages to block him from getting stabbed. He falls. And ends up. She ends up getting fucking speared seemingly dies now ricky chan ricky tan kills steven rain because steven rain was trying to you know double cross him then lee confronts him and now like you get this kind of moment where 
He's like, kill me, Lee. Kill me. And then Carter's like, no, don't do it. And then <laughs> then Tan says something like super personal. And then Lee's like, Carter's like, okay, yeah, kill this motherfucker. Then Ricky Tan tries to grab the gun. But Carter, I think, like trips the car the carpet. And then Lee just kicks him out the fucking window. <laughs> and he falls on a car. And then um, Lee shows up with like a detonator trying to, with like a bomb. And then Lee and Carter jump out and Carter's like, this bitch crazy. <laughs> then they, you know, obviously save the day. Lee and um, Melina kind of share a kiss while, while she goes off to New York. And then Carter and Lee say, let's go to New York. And then the film ends and he gets obviously the same kind of credits you get in the first one. I like, I like this film. I think overall this film is fun. Yeah. Ricky Tan, I think they could have did it better, because especially because he has this whole tie to Lee. He should have been in way more scenes, though, because the faking death thing was not needed. I don't think they needed to do that, because you needed to establish this guy as the bad guy, and I don't really think you did a good job. But overall, besides that, I really like this film. I can definitely watch it when I'm watching all the rush hours. And at the end of the day, the gags are funnier. One of the a lot of the best choreography in this is fucking great in terms of the fight the fights i like that you can tell carter's gotten better so you see that evolution so yeah out, out of 10 i'd give this film like a seven yeah yeah i'd give it like a seven yeah the first one i give a 10 you know what no i'll push it up to an eight i don't i don't think it's that low i think an eight out of ten is pretty solid it's still a solid comedy lee and carter's dynamic is great in this um who Lee, I think they could have done more with. But she and Jackie should have had a fight scene. You have two great martial artists and then you don't have them fight. I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. But overall, I like this film. So tomorrow I'm going to be reviewing probably my, to me, the funniest of the three. I think the first one's funny, but Rush Hour 3 to me is just the funniest of the three. Because there's so many good one-liners. So I'm going to watch that tomorrow and review it. And I'm going to cheers to this movie. But yeah, definitely advise watch Rush Hour 2 if you really like the first one. <clears throat> but other than that, fuck Warner Brothers, fuck Disney, fuck Joy Reid, <laughs> <coughs> fuck LeBron, and fuck Kevin Smith, and obviously fuck Joe Biden. I'll talk to y'all later, or tomorrow. Peace!